Rejoice, ye penny-pinching nerds! Rejoice! For this is a season unbound by our bank accounts, unfettered by fees! A legendary age of liberty, this is the Summer of Free! Hello, Peter Franson here from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Welcome! to the Summer of Free 2020, uh, highlighting the best geek entertainment that's free for anyone that has an internet connection, although there's a little asterisk I need to add to that uh, this year. Uh, for those new to our annual Summer of Free celebration, a little background on why we do this, then I'll give you some rapid fire uh, free entertainment suggestions, followed by my free uh, recommendations, my first, excuse me, free recommendations for this summer. Uh, the Bible teaches that money is meant to be used for fun. We see that in Ecclesiastes 5, 18, and 19, uh, in addition to other things, but it can't truly satisfy us, and we see that in Ecclesiastes 5, 10. And so money should be put to good use in service to God and others rather than primarily on ourselves. And I think we see that in Matthew 13, 44, Matthew 25, 14, and 1 Timothy 6, 17, and 18. We're also instructed to stay out of debt uh, so that the only person that we are subjected to is ultimately God. And we see that in Romans 13, 8, Proverbs 22, 7, and 1 Corinthians 7, 23. Now, as a hardcore geek, uh, this is really challenging teaching because most geek hobbies uh, involve repeated investment, um, and sometimes they have a, a big price tag attached to them. Um, all the cool stuff marketed to us nerds usually comes with some kind of a price tag. So it can be easy to go beyond the enjoyment that we're meant to have into this realm of sort of obsession and financial waste, uh, which I've experienced firsthand. So each year uh, at Christian Geek Central, we've been celebrating the Summer of Free for I don't know how many years now, in which I showcase free entertainment options geared toward geeks that are available for free to anyone with an internet connection. Uh, now this year that asterisk that I mentioned earlier is that uh, I'm going to be in each installment after I give you some resources that are just you know good in general to check out each installment of the summer of free this year is going to feature at least one movie that you can watch for free if you have an internet connection and also you know one that I'll focus on and maybe one or two others that are just kind of really quick recommendations that I won't speak in as much detail about and then also each episode I'm going to give two print and play tabletop game recommendations. So that's where the asterisk comes in because technically you will need the ability to print these out. You'll need more than just an internet connection, but I'm specifically, you know, looking to choose print and play games that are not going to demand a lot of your printer. Uh, so you shouldn't be looking at an ink use that is uh, significantly outside of your normal uh, ink use that I think probably a typical family is going to have as they're, you know, just printing random things um, throughout the week. So, uh, anyway, to kick things off this summer, I'm going to remind you guys of some great starting points when you're looking for free and absolutely legal, no questions asked, entertainment for geeks. First, if you're looking for retro video games, still a great place to go is archive.org's Internet Arcade. Uh, it's uh, featuring arcade, you know, coin-operated video games that were in arcades during the 70s through the 90s. You can find a ton of them archived there you can enjoy for free. If you're looking for modern video games, uh, this is one that you might not normally think about, but go over to Steam, um, with a, I think steampowered.com is the website, and then click enter when you are when you your cursor's in the search field but without typing anything just hit enter and then sort the results by lowest price and then look at all the free options or free to play with caution because those usually have some kind of uh you know built-in microtransaction type thing going on i mean even with the ones that are listed as free you know you want to use discernment on but a lot of them are available really genuinely for free uh, another place you can go is rpgmaker.net this is if you really like turn-based you know nes or super nes style 
JRPGs of yesteryear, then uh, you can find some really good options uh, at RPGMaker.net, specifically because of the filters they allow you to apply. The community surrounding that website has really looked at a lot of these games, rated a lot of these games, and so you can sift through the stuff that is just not going to be worth your time and uh, really enjoy the gems that the community as a whole have said, this is great. And also find specific games that you know have specific gameplay elements that you might be interested in. So you'd be surprised what you can find just spending some time looking over there. And then as many of you may know already, uh, you can go to itch.io slash games slash free and apply filters there as desired as well to find uh, the kinds of games that you're going to be interested in. Finally, uh, for modern video games, go to or just do an internet search on PC Gamer Free Games because uh, every year for a while now they've put out an updated list of the best free games available for PC PC gamers that you can find online. Uh, if you're more into tabletop gaming, well, this is the summer of free for you, but still just some general recommendations. BoardGameGeek.com and go over to uh, the games that you already have in your collection and look specifically at variants. You might be surprised at some rules alterations and uh, other ideas that players have come up with that can really add a f not just a fresh coat of paint, but in some cases an entirely new way to play a game that you already have. Even looking at some of the games that you think are kind of lame in your collection that are maybe just for kids, they're... <laughs> There's a crazy Candyland variant that I found a while back that uh, uh, was pretty nuts. So, I mean, you'd be surprised what you can find that might suddenly make games in your collection that you're not at all interested in surprisingly interesting to you. So that's worth your time. Then if you go over to Drive -through RPG, that's drive through um and just go to their browsing options. Again, they have filters there that you can use to find free uh, games and, and uh, uh, yeah, games. I guess just games. I don't know what else there would be. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, that's uh, some tabletop options for you. If you're into anime, uh, some standard options for you would be Crunchyroll.com and Funimation.com. You're going to have to deal with ads interrupting your experience now and then, but uh, there's still a lot of free options on those two sites. And then movies and TV. You can go to voodoo.com, that's V-U-D-U.com, and select free in their main na navigation. You can go to sonycrackle.com for some nice options. Um, and then probably the one that has the widest variety of options for me, it's kind of my go-to place if I'm looking for free movies, is tubitv.com, T-U-B-I-T-V.com. Uh, and then finally, a new resource to me is imdb.com. They're kind of trying to get into the streaming content game and uh, are offering a lot of free options as they do that. So imdb.com is where you just look for IMDB TV once you get over there uh, and you can find a number of options for you. And now for 2020's first summer of free recommendations. First up, uh, the movie I'm going to recommend this time is American Hero, which you can watch over at sonycrackle.com. Uh, the description for that one reads, Despite having superpowers, Melvin only lives for women, drugs, and crime. However, when things take an ugly turn, he must now use these special powers to take down a crime lord and win back his son. Here's just a little of what I had to say about this movie back when I reviewed it. This is a drama. It's um, uh, it, it's a superpower story, not a superhero story. Similar uh, in some ways to Chronicle, uh, also in the way that that was filmed in a in kind of a documentary style. This is also filmed in documentary style. There is a film crew that is interested in making a documentary about this guy Melvin, who has the ability to move objects telekinetically with his mind. And if you watch the trailer, you'll see like uh, a ton of that stuff going on. The trailer to me left an impression of, okay, this is going to be a, a drama, but it's going to have lots of action in it, too. It's going to be kind of a comedy. Um, it's much more of a drama than it is an action comedy. So if you watch the trailer, uh, don't go in with expectations of independent, you know, sci-fi action comedy or something. This is much more of a, uh, a, a quiet slice of life slice of life drama with a few bursts of action here and there it's very character driven and so you're just kind of watching melvin uh as you know his life is just tanking at the beginning and then as he you know really wants to get connected with his son again because his ex-wife has basically uh denied him uh any rights to see and visit his son so he's trying to clean up his life so that that he can spend some time with his son, who's probably about, I want to say, like seven or six or seven years old, maybe. Um, 
and so as a dad, I certainly connected to to that type of story. So I mean, if you're a sucker for father son stories, there's I think there's something in this for you. Um, but anyway, it's, like I said, stylistically, as far as like the feel and, and the pace of the movie, uh, it's one that you kind of have to be ready to not just be blown away and, and be spoon-fed all the plot and character elements. You just kind of have to watch and, and kind of f- figure out what you think about, what this, about this character, what's going, you know, what's going on, where, where the story is heading. The, most of the effects were, were pretty good. The effects are all about Melvin moving things with his mind, and so much of the time they're going to be, they're, 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 taking, they're making CG objects uh, to move around on screen instead Instead of like attaching things to wires and then removing the wires later on. Uh, I have no idea what your taste in movies are, but if I were a time traveler, I'd go back in time and say, Peter, um, hey, this one's worth renting. Although I should say that when Melvin relapses, turn away when the party music starts until the party music stops. Uh, there's some unnecessary nudity uh, that's tossed in briefly that really isn't needed just to convey to us that Melvin has fallen back into depravity. Uh, I would say go in expecting a quiet, slow-paced drama, not an action comedy as the trailer might suggest. And with the right expectations, I think this is a solid movie despite some flaws. Uh, now it's not rated, but I would say it's equivalent to an R rating for language language throughout, violence, and brief nudity. And now some quick recommendations, both of which you can find over at TubiTV.com. The first is Turbo Kid. I watched this, uh, I don't know, a month or so ago. The description reads, Welcome to a post-apocalyptic 1997, where an orphaned teenager must rescue his robot friend from a warlord who controls the water supply. This is, uh, this is an interesting movie in that it's being made... Uh, presented in a style as though it were made in the 80s. Uh, In the mid-80s, where the idea of 1997 being the future was not at all unreasonable, and it being a post-apocalyptic future. And so it's a post-apocalypse where there's all kinds of leftover artifacts from the 80s, and the visual effects are from the 80s as well, you know, and it has in some ways kind of a plucky, you know, teen kids movie kind of vibe, but it is extremely violent, extremely gory, I mean, comically so, not in a realistic way at all, I don't think. Uh, And so just watch a trailer for it and see for yourself if that might be worth uh, killing some time on an evening and then a classic uh, anime movie that I feel like even if you're not into anime is worth checking out just so you can kind of know you just get you get get a few geek cred points you know Uh, and that's Akira and this one is available uh, over at to be tv.com as well description reads a mysterious child with psychic abilities escapes his prison and inadvertently draws a violent motorcycle gang into a heinous web of experimentation I don't know, is that what that movie was about? That's freaking a weird movie. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I do think it's worth uh, checking out for most any geek. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, so the two print and play games I want to draw your attention to this time. First up, Deep Space D6. You can find this over at BoardGameGeek.com. It did eventually get a physical release with minor upgrades, but the free version is still available at BoardGameGeek.com. In Deep Space D6, you are a captain of the UEF. Your RPTR class starship was on a routine patrol of the Auburn system when a distress call was received. Upon warping in, you quickly realized it was a trap. With the help of your crew, you must survive until a rescue fleet appears. Deep Space D6 is a solitaire dice game about surviving the cruel depths of space. Each turn you'll roll crew dice and assign them to stations. You must plan carefully to take care of internal and external threats to your ship. Survive to win. So you've got to survive by destroying all external threats in the threat deck. Each round you roll six dice which represent crew members who are available amidst the chaos of the sudden emergency. Each side of a die represents a type of crew member capable of addressing a particular threat to the ship including commanders, tactical, medical, science, and engineering. The threat deck reveals new threats throughout the game. There are internal threats, external threats, and even away missions you can send crew members on. If you can survive the onslaught of threats contained in the entire higher threat deck without having your ship's hull reduced to zero, you and your brave crew survive to explore another day. You can use the files available to make your own custom dice if you feel like getting crafty, which also adds some value by introducing a hobby element, but even without custom dice, the design seems to make it pretty intuitive to play with regular six-sided dice. There are 
lots of reviews of this game online. I recommend the review by YouTuber Marco Omnigamer, who specifically reviews the print and play version rather than the published version. Next up, Space Dogfight, also available at BoardGameGeek.com. Space Dogfight is a rapid two-player game where the players will challenge each other in a brutal and ultimate space duel using custom-made fleets of spaceships. At the start of the game, each player secretly builds a fleet of ships using a point-based system and choosing from four different ship types with various strengths in movement, attack, and defense. The players place their ships, alternating one at a time, into their starting zones before play begins and the ships advance and attack. Random elements at setup and during the game also bring asteroids into the mix that players must account for, so games can play out differently each time depending on fleet uh, build, ship placement, and asteroids. Play ends when one player destroys all opposing ships or one player gets all of his ships into the opposing player's starting zone. Players then add up the point value of their surviving ships and the highest total wins. If you want to add some hobby value and you have some poster board, you could make a giant version of the space dogfight play area, spend some time coloring it, and make your ship units out of Legos or finding uh, appropriate items in your geeky game and toy collections. Marco Omnigamer has also made a review for this game that I recommend checking out. All right, well, that's it. I'll be back in a few weeks with another set of summer of free entertainment suggestions. Be sure to subscribe and then click that bell so that you don't miss out. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.